Hello and welcome to this video where we will be talking about indicator of compromise and IOCs and especially how to create IOCs using uh, Yara. So, and, and uh, this talk could be used for uh, people who are doing malware analysis and also people who are doing threat hunting. So again, IOC means indicator of compromise, and you can you can think of them like this. They are the small piece of information that can, could be used to distinguish whether or not an, uh, a machine is compromised. Again, they are like the small criteria or the piece of information that could be used uh, to indicate that this computer or this system is actually compromised. Now that indicator could be a registry key, like there's some specific, uh, there's a, a specific registry key uh, that's only been that will only be added by let's say some malware or it's modified by a malware, stuff like that. Uh, it could be some malware characteristics very specific to a malware itself, like a malware sample, like its file name, the size, location, its hash or other process uh, p uh, portable executable information which we will be uh, seeing a lot whether in this presentation or in the lab also it could be a process or service okay it could be like, like uh, the malware or the uh, the compromise uh, can be identified when we find a specific process a specific service it could be a, a dns request or a dns query uh, those all could be used as a comp uh, the indicator of compromise. It also could be used, uh, a file could be used as an indicator of compromise, like they are uh, a file that has been dropped on the system. So if we find a specific file on the system, we know this file has been probably dropped by, by this sample. There are many others, by the way, there are even combinations of them, and we will see how we can combine these two be very specific in our searching criteria in order to indicate whether or not this computer has been uh, compromised. Now, types of IOCs, we have different types of IOCs. So we have Open IOC, which is from Mandiant. They have the openioc.org, which you can find more details there. There is the Yara, which we will be using in this uh, today in uh, in this lab and there is also the uh, threat intelligence IOCs that you can get from threat intel and stuff like ctix taxi those are all uh, in, the, those are all threat intelligent uh, information that you can use for your uh, indicator of compromise in our case we will only be covering yara but at least have an idea about open IOC. So this is an XML based file. It's a basic text file and it's XML based. So it uses tags and you can use a tool to create it. There's a tool called IOC editor. Also you can find that on Mandiant, I think's website. Uh, so there's a tool to create that. But at the end, since it's XML based, you can use any text editor and do the, the editing yourself if you know the tags and, and how to use that. Uh, tools to scan so you can do uh, use them after you write you can use IOC finder you can use redline to do uh, scanning for IOCs and these unfortunately they are only windows uh, they are they are only windows tools so you can run them on a on a linux machine uh, open IOC this is an example of how an open IOC looks like as you can see here it's XML based so you can see those XML tags we can see here at the beginning like there's a short description zeros and there is some description explaining this authored by Mandiant uh, the, the author date and then all of these uh, different uh, indicators which could be used to uh, identify whether or not we have uh, and a, a compromise. Now, Open IOC, which we said is a tool could, that could be used to create this. It's a really easy tool. I've used it before, but again, we are not going to use it in uh, in this course. Uh, but you can you can download it and you can use it if you want. Uh, you can see you can see that uh, y there are some uh, conditions and uh, between the different indicators available and like for example here or and so there's an or between 
this these indicators and these but inside these there is an and so uh, these have to happen and these the they, one of them could happen and it could satisfy this part of the rule and the same thing applies uh, on the next part you can see the description you can see when this was created modified the GUID of it uh, who's the author mandiant here etc so all of these are uh, created by an open IOC editor which created this is what you'll get at the end Yara so Yara is our tool which is a kind of a scanner and it's based on you uh, rules so you can think of it similar to an, like an antivirus an antivirus uses uh, uses some rules so uh, you can use those rules to search for uh, files you can search for uh, fold it could be a file it could be a folder it could also be okay sorry I had to interrupt the, the video so Yara scanning and rules again uh, Yara is a kind of a tool which could be used for uh, scanning files so it depends on uh, it, it, it's a it's a scanner which depends on sorry on rules so uh, it can be you can write rules to use to scan for files, folders, or even a running process. So you can use it to scan processes currently running in memory. Now, uh, it works on different platforms, as you can see, Windows, Linux, and M M Mac. And it also could be extensible with Python. So you can extend, extend uh, its features with Python. Uh, uh, it's also the way you use it is you can use we, we will do a demo but in general Yara the options and then the rules and then the target which you are you are uh, you are uh, scanning uh, there's a really good documentation which I highly recommend you keep uh, forget about the 3.8 because I think now there is a much better version of this so uh, I will update the slide uh, but yeah again this is similar to an antivirus which depends on signatures, you write the signatures, you use them, and the way uh, the tool works is it will use those signatures to scan files, folders, and processes, and it will tell you whether the, there's a, uh, whether there is a, a, a match or not. So it will use those rules to match if there is a, a if if that sample matches or not any specific rule. So this is a sim sample IOC. You can see rule, silent banker, and then colon injector. Uh, so the rule, I'll talk about the syntax in a little bit, but uh, rule, silent banker, and injector here is a tag. Meta, we have a metadata section, which you can see description threat thread level in the wild etc you can see strings those a bunch of strings and then we have a section which is the condition and these are both between these curly brackets now so there is a meta section string section and the condition section uh, we will be talking about uh, all of these now and also we will be using them in the lab but this is just an example of what this might uh, what a Yara rule might uh, look like okay so the simplest Yara rule will be something like this I just created this like it's a really basic simple rule like you can see the rule that's part of the syntax then demo one which is the rule name and then colon and then we have a, some tag you can add there and we have a condition which is and then the condition here I just wrote true this will be true for every file that you scan probably so uh, that's just basic uh, rule if we do more like add another demo so you can see again rule demo 2 we have the curly brackets and then we define two string we define the string section and then we have the dollar sign a equal this string we have dollar sign b equal this string I'll explain a little bit what no case and these are and then we have dollar sign C uh, this string so what are what does this mean so this is the the string section that's one we define the strings that we want 
So here, no case means whether this is an uppercase or lowercase, it doesn't matter. Wherever you find Norton, just try, uh, like that, that's what we are looking for. So whenever we find Norton, that's what we are looking for. And this one is all, uh, it's looking for ASCII and white. So ASCII, uh, it means it's using the ASCII encoding uh, format. And then wide means it's using not a Unicode, by the way, like many people say, this is not Unicode, but it's using a two byte character representation. So if we have a two byte, a character which is represented in two bytes, then the wide will match that. Now, why it's not uh, Unicode? Because it cannot match non-English characters. Unicode can do that, but so, uh, can represent non-English characters. So wide really is not about Unicode, and you can double check that in, in the Yara documentation. Now we have the condition section. So in the condi condition section here, it's saying that we uh, are looking for a match of A and B, and we, it also has to match C. So if all of these three characters are found, then we have a match, okay? So that's what this rule is about. So rules on rules, <laughs> it's funny, but uh, just some uh, guidance. So mostly they are C style notations uh, is followed, like uh, it's following using the kind of C style uh, notation. The comments are also C style, like you can put uh, the, uh, the slash star comment here uh, star forward slash then again so anything between that will be a comment or if you have a single line you can put double slash and then that will be commented out uh, we have co conditional operators the and or and then we have also the boolean and arithmetic operators which are these so we can use all of those and we will be seeing a lot of these if not everything Another thing, not just strings, so we can check also for a file size. Like here, this example is checking for a file size. Probably not the best way to do that, but there, is, there are others we will see in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the lab. File type, you can also use it. Like for example, here we define the string and it starts with uh, percentage PDF minus. And here, what we are seeing is condition. If we find this at, at zero, which means at offset zero, then this is a PDF. So we could have probably rename the demo uh, four into like PDF, something like that. P characteristics. So we can also check, and this is one of the powerful things about Yara, that we can, instead of scanning the whole file, okay, instead of scanning the whole file and checking, uh, for strings, we can use the PE file format and start scanning based on features available in the PE file. So in this in this uh, rule, uh, we imported the PE uh, library, then rule demo five, then we have the conditions. And here, what you can see is we are doing the PE dot sections, check section zero, which is actually the first section dot name. If it equals UPX zero and if the number of sections are more than four, then we will say we have a match of demo five. Again, PE.sections, so we are looking at the sections uh, part of the portable executable file. Uh, since the indexes of an array starts at zero, so zero means here the first one, dot name, so we are looking for the name of the section. If it matches this one and the number of sections, all of them, the number of sections is more than four, then we will say this file matches, uh, is a match and uh, it will trigger the demo five. P imports again, uh, lab, this is for lab three, E, P imports kernel 32.dll. And now in this part, what we are doing, we are searching the imports table for the kernel 32.dll and then from there we are seeing if the delete file a was the the api delete file a was referenced we'll have a match now hashes and entropy we can also use that so if you want you can do import math import hash and that way we will start using the hash and the math uh, library so uh, this condition is hash dot md5 so we are using the md5 function and we say zero so it i wanted uh, to go from the beginning of the file until the end of the file so we are taking the whole bytes if after hashing this with md5 
matches this one or SHA-1 for the same thing from offset 0 to the file size if it matches this then uh, that's the first part of the condition okay which is now probably true if it matches and the math.entropy so we are also doing for the whole size of the file is less than 4 then we say that we have this type of uh, th this this uh, rule will be triggered okay so here we are checking based on the md5 based on sha1 here we are checking the entropy but the entropy here is for the whole file not probably for a section like we see in other tools they can uh, like especially in die the uh, detect it easy you can see that it's uh, you can scan for the whole file and you can scan the entropy for a specific uh, section one thing to keep in mind is hashes must be lowercase, so keep that in mind. You'll need to convert them. I will show you how to do that also in the uh, in the lab. So a quick demo, we will need to write a Yara rule to detect all tools from sysinternals suit, and then we need to modify to uh, detect the PS exec only. So that's a quick demo which we uh, will be doing, and there's a lab for this. Again, uh, we will be doing that in a separate video. Uh, lab time and please this is your best Fiara friend check this out there are other resources I probably will add them to canvas so uh, check those and uh, yeah I hope uh, you learned something out of this and uh, if you have any comments notes please let me know thank you and see you in the next video